Hi everyone, welcome back to our field internship series. Today we're on episode three where we're going to talk about finding our rhythm. My name is Carly and this is Dan. Hello. So we're going to talk about kind of the process of finding our rhythm while we're out in the field on calls working in the ambulance. How does that sound? This is hard. <laughs> this, I remember this 30 years ago. It was like the most stressful thing. There's this like going on that first date, mm -hmm. right? It's like, oh my gosh, I have to get to know this girl. What do I say? And then you finally get into a rhythm and you, so it's the same type of thing. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do is, is hear from you as a new person on how you are dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And then as an old guy, I'll let you know how I go with it. Perfect. Well, the first thing I just want to say is it takes a lot of time and I'm still in the process of finding my rhythm. So don't feel like your brief internship, you're going to completely find your rhythm and have it down pat by the time you get out. It's, it's a process and your um, internship rhythm is gonna look a little bit different than when you get your own career. Even if it's with the same department, you're gonna have your crew, each crew has its own rhythm, so you sort of have to adapt to those it things. It changes all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of something I'm learning. So um, a big thing for me is getting to know my crew, getting really comfortable with my crew. That's a big, that trust, you have to be able to trust your, your crew and they have to trust you. So that's a big part of, of how I've started that process of finding my rhythm is gaining the trust and rapport with your crew. Also just having um, kind of a method, which based on dispatch information and what I'm getting from the call, kind of what equipment do we usually take in? Do we, you know, do we lead with the monitor, some people like to bring in a little bit less, some people like to bring in a little bit more. So getting comfortable with your your equipment, the equipment that you carry on your ambulance. And then um, when I go in, getting comfortable with what tasks am I gonna delegate out versus what am I gonna take control of? So um, as the lead in charge, I wanna kind of talk to the patient, maybe potentially talk to friends, family, bystanders, um, and start delegating out some some vitals, some other assessments to my crew. We have someone taking down their information, mm -hmm. you know, first, last name, all that basic information we need, finding medication lists, things like that. Um, so that's like the, the first part of it for me is right. figuring out how we're going to approach the scene and, and keeping some sort of rhythm in that uh, so that I, I know the vitals are going to get taken. I right. know the questions are going to get asked. The right. history is going to get gathered. The scene is going to be safe, stuff like that. Right. So as, a, as an intern, your, your preceptor is probably going to look at you to delegate that stuff, mm -hmm. right? So they're probably going to stand there like this, mm -hmm. waiting for you to say, okay, put the monitor on, take some vitals. In real life, you know just that trust you have with your crew mm -hmm. that, okay, I know Joe's going to get the vitals. I know Bob's going to get... He's going to get them on the monitor, and I'm just going to have this develop this relationship with the patient. Mm -hmm. So um, it might be a little bit different once you get out onto the street mm -hmm. uh, working, uh, because then you won't have to. You can you can do more of that cognitive offload and just mm -hmm. have okay. You guys take care of this. I'm just going to take care of the interaction. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and so, how do you? How did you get from, you know? once you have that relationship with your crew, what then is your kind of rhythm with, with taking on the patient and taking care of the patient? So, I mean, it's that whole, remember we talked last time, I think about sick versus not sick thing. Mm -hmm. So if I walk in and they're not sick, you can see immediately, okay, we have some time, then I can have that that one-on-one -on -one and I already know what's gonna happen with these guys. They're gonna do their stuff because that's their job. And uh, I'm going to sit down and I'm just going to, it's just like I said, the first date thing. It's introduce myself, get to know you, find out what happened, get on the same level, mm -hmm. um, and then just go through a series of questions on, on what's happening. So the thing about the dispatch info, sometimes dispatch info can lead you down a different path, mm -hmm. like, oh, we're going on chest pain. I'm going to focus on chest mm -hmm. pain when actually the guy's having gallbladder mm -hmm. issues, right? And so I, I like to keep an open mind. I don't even like dispatch information sometimes. And so what I'll do is, is I'll just sit down and it'll just be a conversation. And then I'm not going to try to formulate my question, my, my backup question, until I get their answer. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, 
that happens, then I'm not listening. Mm -hmm. And that happens sometimes anyway. So I'll be, I'll be in that mode, it's my 12th call of the day, and I'm just sitting here and oh, I'm talking to you and I have no idea what you're saying. And so when that happens, I lose my rhythm, mm -hmm. but I can regain it. So, okay, I need to reset. So you're having chest pain, it's substernal, it radiates to the right side, mm -hmm. and so I can reset myself and regain that rhythm if I need to. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the whole time the guys are telling me, okay, I got the 12 lead on, this is what it says, uh, vital signs are this, and so then I can just put that into my, into my assessment. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I found being comfortable in, in your rhythm is also just having the, the knowledge behind what do each of these values mean really having a thorough deep understanding of and we should we should know this going into our internship but sometimes we need to review you know blood pressure information you know like um what i'm trying to say pulse and spo2 and mm -hmm. just having having those numbers memorized what highs and lows mean what um you know rapid respirations or tachycardia what what all those things are indicative of right. and then also taking into account the patient's history sometimes honestly the biggest thing i have found is it's helpful to even be just constantly reviewing that because as a seasoned medic you you know all that information it's like you in and out you do it all the time but as as new paramedics we're learning so much information we're learning so many disease processes and and values and so um, reviewing over and over again so that I can ask the right questions right. I can ask you know and I can I can take the right vitals do the right measurements do the right um, assessments right. things like that um, because I, I one thing I've noticed is there's a really natural flow to people who are who are very familiar with with the different disease processes they they know what the next step is right. to look for they're thinking it's important to take what the patient is saying but also thinking a couple steps ahead for what are some things that I'm going to be doing next right. what are some things that I'm going to be preparing for um, so you don't get kind of you don't stumble on bits of new information or bits right of, does that make sense yes and so let and, and being able to take the information from your crew okay so he has a blood pressure of 60 and you just don't, okay, so let's pressure 60, and you continue on with your assessment. You know that you have to do something at right. that point. Right. So now it's, okay, can you start a large bore IV mm -hmm. and we'll get some fluids? Right. Um, or, you know, let's try it with the statics or, you know, whatever. Let's right. lay the patient down. Mm -hmm. So exactly. you be, need to be able to break away from that rhythm right. and start your treatment, but get back into it. Exactly. That's a very good way of, of saying well, it. Thank you. <laughs> How long would you say it took you to oh. get into what you would call a rhythm? Um, quite a long time. Yeah. Quite a long time to do it comfortably. Uh, I've always been in a, a very fast or very uh, busy station. So um, there's, a, there's times when you get so burnt out that you kind of lose your rhythm just as career-wise. Mm -hmm. And so you need to readjust your, your life, mm -hmm. your lifestyle. And, and so just be aware of that and uh, just regain it. But it took, me, it took me a few years to just know that, okay, this is, this is where we're going, this is what we're doing, and it just becomes second nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think another part of finding a rhythm is knowing that each day is gonna be different. Mm -hmm. It's being comfortable in the unknown, and I think that's where a lot of it comes from. And that's why we like this job, mm -hmm. right? It's because it's unknown. Exactly, and so just, just being comfortable in that you're gonna you're gonna come to a different patient every time, mm -hmm. even if it's the same patient, it's gonna be a different patient essentially, right? right. It's gonna have there's gonna be different reasons that you're there. So, getting comfortable in that unknown is a part of of that rhythm of how you're going to problem solve and think critically right. in those in those moments. Right, and that's a really good point. Is is even though it's the same patient, you need to treat it as a new patient mm -hmm. because sometimes we get locked in on, okay, this is Bob, Bob has chest pain, it's always this way. Mm -hmm. Well, it could be something totally different. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get caught in that little rabbit hole. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a very good point. Um, and do you find, we kind of talked about, you know, different crews or different stations, different rhythms. How do you find that you, you adapt to those? 
Uh, well, generally um, on the rig, I'm the guy in charge of the of the medical part, right? And so you kind of go in there, you, they know that, and so it's easy to, uh, maybe the first call, I'd say, hey, can you guys grab vitals on, on the monitor? Joe, can you start an IV? And then they'll know then on out, that's just how it, we like to have things mm -hmm. done. And so uh, it's fairly easy when you're in a, a department that you're, you're familiar with, mm -hmm. and, and you, know, you know what the limitations are of the crew you're with, generally. Mm -hmm. You know the limitations of the ambulance partners that you have coming in. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's just all, it's still part of the unknown, right? Mm -hmm. You know, what's this guy going to do today? Mm -hmm. So That's a good point. Still taking a couple steps back and re delegating again. Right. Taking, right. you know, not, not assuming, you know, if you've worked with that crew for weeks, months, years, whatever, then you may not have to. But if they're somewhat new or you haven't worked with them in a while, it's okay right. to take a step back and, and, and delegate and everybody right. in in your crew has to be aware of it. You know, okay, someone else is in charge. We haven't worked together. Like, I'm going to take direction. I'm gonna, right. I'm going to be a follower in this moment. He's kind of the, right. the leader. And right. so learning your role on the crew exactly. is really important. And so if you go into a critical call, I mean, you can assign tasks before you get there. If you go into mm -hmm. cardiac arrest, hey, John, I need you to take compressions. Can you grab the IO? Put the monitor on? You know, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And so it that kind of takes that first part of it out mm -hmm. and everyone's going to their job and then once we get there we can adjust as needed. Mm -hmm. That's really good. So it sounds like you being in the department you've been in for a while um, you have sort of a uh, people people know you people may respect you or know you or at I least understand you so your <laughs> understand your <Appreciate> that. Yeah. <laughs> kind of understand your rhythm so even when you're with with new people you have a you have a sense of understanding of when we've talked about this before but the culture of the right. department and just the you know how you operate within right. your your community so that's a right. that's a big thing is um not necessarily everybody's going to adapt to you and the way you do it you have to do some adapting to the right, to the exactly. culture and so you have to find also the flow of how does the department work what kinds right. of things as a rule as our agency protocols or whatever do do we bring on scene or you know what kinds of questions do we ask um what are the hospitals in my area so understanding your kind of agency guidelines and protocols is really important for that rhythm exactly. as well you may have a hospital, these guys want blood draws, mm -hmm. but these guys don't want blood draws. So you have to have put that into your, your delegation of tasks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So That's good. It's very good. Finding a rhythm is not easy. Not easy. <laughs> it takes time. And that's another thing I have looked to. You, it's okay to kind of take bits and pieces from people who are who have more time in in the field than right. you do it's okay to say hey i like the way he does this i like the way she does this right you can just bits and pieces exactly mm -hmm. and as long as it continues to work for you and your crew it's okay mm -hmm. to sort of take that and adopt it and and then people and start learning. taking stuff from you mm -hmm. so yeah one day one day <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, this has been our episode on finding your rhythm. So I hope that you join us again for episode four of our field internship series.